What's up beautiful people? Today we're going to be checking out Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso vows to save Africa and its resources. Let's get to it. Its resources, Ibrahim Traore. Burkina Faso has bagged itself one of the most revolutionary presidents in Africa. The youngest president, not only in Burkina Faso, but also in the world at large, Ibrahim Traore, born on March 14, 1988 in Kira in the Bondoki, Muhan province in Burkina Faso, has shown to be a reincarnation of Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso's president who served from the year 1983 through a coup to his assassination in 1987. Yeah, we saw a video of his coup. That was bloody. I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out. Ibrahim Trahare received his primary education in Bondoki and attended a high school in Bobo du Lasso, where he became known as quiet, yet very talented. From 2006, he studied at the University of Ouagadougou, where he was part of the Association of Muslim Students. He graduated from the university with honors. Ibrahim yeah. Trahare joined the army of Burkina Faso in 2009. He was sent to Morocco for anti-aircraft training before being transferred to an infantry unit in Kaya, a town in Burkina Faso's north. He was promoted to lieutenant in 2014. Trahore joined a United Nations peacekeeping force called MINUSMA involved in the Mali War. In 2018, he was known as one of the MINUSMA soldiers who showed courage during major rebel attacks in the Tumbutu region. He subsequently returned to Burkina Faso, where he assisted in operations against the escalating jihadist insurgency. Ibrahim Trahore fought in the Otapuanyu Offensive of 2019 and several other counter-insurgency operations in the country's north. In the year 2020, he was promoted to captain. In January 2022, Traoré was part of the coup that ousted the then-president, Paul Henry Sandogo de Miba. Come October 6, he assumed the position of interim president as head of state, supreme head of the armed forces. Many supporters of the January coup became dissatisfied with the performance of Paul Henry Sandogo de Miba, the junta's leader, regarding his inability to contain the jihadist insurgency. Travere later claimed that he and other officers had tried to get de Miba to refocus on the rebellion, but eventually opted to overthrow him as his ambitions were devoting away from what we set out to do. The dissatisfaction about the situation was highest among younger officers who fought against the rebels at the front lines. In addition, there were delays in pay for the Cobra troops. When the plotters launched their coup on 30 September, Travere still held the rank of captain. The current rise of military leadership occurs amid a renewed scramble for Africa, where former colonial powers like France and Great Britain and new global players like China, and Turkey, Russia. India and Brazil are vying for influence. Unlike the 1884 to 1885 Berlin Conference, which enacted the historical division and exploitation of Africa, there is a growing sense of defiance and self-determination on the continent. Africa is transitioning from a passive spectator to an assertive actor mm -hmm. in a world that is steadily and irreversibly moving from a unipolar moment to a multiplex world. A trend recognized by Amitabha Charya since 2014. Good thing for Africa. In February 2023, Traoré's government expelled the French forces assisting in fighting the local insurgency from Burkina Faso. He subsequently declared, we want to look at other horizons because we want win-win partnerships, supporting the diversification of Burkina Faso's international partnerships. Shortly after, Traoré's government expressed support for a federation with Mali and they both invited Guinea. All three countries are under military leadership, and if it were to become a union, it would be the largest country ruled by military junta. In April, he declared a general mobilization of the population to support the military, as rebel forces continued to increase the rate of their attacks. In the following month, Traoré questioned the planned restoration of democracy for 2024, stating that elections could not be held unless the insurgents were pushed back and the security situation had been improved. 
On 29 July 2023, following the 2023 Russia-Africa Summit, Trotteré said that the people of his country support Russia and communicated that a decision had been made to reopen the Russian embassy, which was closed in 1992. Mm -hmm. According to the newspaper Le Monde, in May 2020... I think in his statement, he, just to give context, I think I might have heard that he said, we support Russia, we'll do business with Russia, but he said we'll do business with other people too. Um, but in the right, as long as the business is good, something like that, something in that context. So I'm just giving the whole context. So it doesn't sound like this is just him saying we we are for Russia, you know. Even though they would open the border and the embassy, the Russian embassy, he also said they are willing to do business with other people too, just to give a lot more context. 23. The Trahore regime seems, for the time being, to be favoring the use of its forces in the fight against the jihadists, and has not asked Wagner's Russians for help. During that same Russia-Africa summit, Trahore thanked Russian President Vladimir Putin for deciding to send free grain to African countries. Nonetheless, he expressed that Africa should become self-sufficient in food by the next summit. Mm -hmm. Trahore spoke on the paradox of wealth and poverty that defines the African continent, rich in resources, but impoverished in living conditions. My generation does not understand this. How can Africa, which has so much wealth, become the poorest continent in the world today? And why do African leaders travel the world to beg? Right. He said, adding that the West should not see African presidents as puppets. He also shed light on the migration crisis where desperate Africans risk their lives seeking better prospects in Europe. In a strong indictment of African leadership, Trahore asked his fellow African leaders to stand up to manipulation by imperialistic forces. He referred to Burkina Faso's VDF, Volunteers for the Defense of the Fatherland, and their struggle against terrorism, saying, since 2019, Burkina Faso has implemented the renowned VDF. They assist our regular army in battling border and internal terrorism. In a powerful conclusion, Trahare evoked the spirit of Thomas Sankara's 1984 UN address, using the phrases, the slave who is unable to assume his revolt does not deserve to be pitied, and fatherland or death, we shall triumph. These words resonated across social media, igniting passion and determination in African youth. Really About like 39 him. years ago, Burkina Faso had Thomas Sankara, who ruled from 1993 to 1987. He had a great vision for a better Africa. Thomas Sankara's vision was to promote the well-being of the poorest people in the country by eliminating corruption and dominance of former French colonial power. Sankara went ahead to implement a lot, like preventing famine, agrarian self-sufficiency, land reform, suspension of rural taxes, and vaccination programs against meningitis, yellow fever, and measles. He also focused on building schools, health centers, water reservoirs, and outlawed female genital mutilation, polygamy, and so much more. Ibrahim Trahare this time had the same vision as Thomas Sankara, the ideology of prioritizing education, addressing inequality, improving healthcare, and protecting the environment, in line with Sankara's belief in sustainable development, which had him combating desertification in the Sahel by planting over 10 million trees. Ibrahim mm -hmm. intends to promote renewable energy sources, invest in eco-friendly initiatives, and encourage responsible agricultural practices to ensure a greener future for Burkina Faso. Right. Concerning education, Traoré believes that education is key to empowerment and nation-building. Absolutely. And he proposes investing more in schools, improving... I said the same thing in my video. I think we saw a video. I, I forgot the country. Was it Ivory Coast? But they said in 2015, 50% of the students dropped out in 2015. Like, isn't that concerning? When Africa's problem is lack of production, but then the students are not going to school. This should be a reason for the students to go to school even more. Like you should even enforce it if you have to put the law to make sure everybody's in school because we need production more than ever.
and your anyways having access to quality education for all and promoting vocational training mm -hmm. to create skilled laborers in addition to address inequality Ibrahim aims to work towards fair wealth distribution ensuring that the benefits of economic growth reach every citizen he also emphasizes the importance of healthcare accessibility and plans to improve healthcare facilities, strengthen primary healthcare services, and make healthcare affordable for all. When it comes to natural resources, Burkina Faso is blessed with great resources. They produce cotton and sorghum, which are important to the Burkina Bay people. Due to the importance of sorghum to the Burkina Bay economy, the government has dedicated vast sums of money to developing the industry. One of the significant steps that the government has taken to increase sorghum growth in the country is to fund research into new varieties of sorghum. Mm -hmm. The World Bank estimated that in 2007, roughly 20% of Burkina Faso's total land area was considered arable. Despite the vast amount of arable land in Burkina Faso, the country is not considered self-sufficient in agriculture. Because of that, the Burkina Bay government has put in place a measure to grow the farming sector using modern farming methods. That's good. Some of Burkina Faso's most important crops include cotton, maize, sorghum, and millet. Recently, Burkina Bay farmers have also begun growing sugarcane on a large scale. Burkina Faso is also rich in mineral resources and produces gold, zinc, copper, manganese, phosphate, and limestone in substantial quantities. It also has reserves of diamonds, bauxite, nickel, and vanadium, they the most everything. important being gold, with the nation being the fourth largest gold producer on the African continent. However, some of these remain largely unexploited. Africa, as a whole, is the major producer of important metals and minerals such as uranium, which is used to produce nuclear energy, platinum, which is used for jewelry and industrial applications, and nickel which is used in producing stainless steel, magnets, coins, rechargeable batteries, bauxite, and cobalt, just to name a few. The two most profitable minerals are gold and diamond, producing about 483 tons in 2008, making 22% of the world's total production. South Africa accounting for almost half the produce, then Ghana, Guinea, Mali, and Tanzania being the other major producers. In the same year, 2008, 55% of the world's diamonds came from Africa, Botswana, 55. Angola, South Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Namibia being the largest producers. In 2007, 12.5% of the world's total oil production and 6.45% of total natural gas production came from Africa. Nigeria, Libya, Algeria, Egypt, and Angola dominate Africa's oil industry. All these and so much more. Ibrahim Trahare therefore strives to have a united Africa, harnessing collective strength and resources to have a transformed Africa. The African continent possesses all the necessary resources to move forward, rallying to come closer in collaboration. This period of transformation a in Africa is marked by support from the African diaspora and the rise of influential figures who resonate with the youth. With its youthful and growing population and rich natural resources, Africa is poised to harness its demographic power to advance towards self-governance. As Africa continues on this path of self-determination, Captain Ibrahim Trahore's rallying cry serves as a powerful symbol of a continent that seeks dignity, autonomy, and equitable recognition in the world. Hmm. His vision is a beacon for a future where Africa stands strong, self-reliant, and equal on the global stage. Yeah. Ibrahim is confident that with... Okay, so we can end that one right there. That was a great video. I'll put the link to the channel in the description. And I wish Ibrahim Traore all the best. You know, if he has the best interests of Africa at heart, I'm African, you know, so I, I support that. I'm going to advocate for that. The thing about African nations we've been seeing is some people might want the best, but the thing is there are other group of people that only want things that interest them. 
So the best of Africa might not be of interest to some people because they might make less money. And because of that, whatever Ibrahim Traore and others have planned out would be jeopardized. But let me know what you think about that. Feel free to share your thoughts. It seems that people like him, even not just in Burkina Faso, but around Africa. People advocate for, you know, the policies he speaks about. If he's able to bring, if he's able to show walking of everything he's talking about in his nation, a lot more people will listen to him around Africa. So let's see how he does. He just, he's barely like a year or two in power. So if he can really make a change in like two years or three years, People will listen to him more. He'll be more credible. So let's let's see. Time will tell. It's the end of this video. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I'm